So today we are moving the boat into the, the haul out slip. There's no one hauling out until Thursday and that is us. So we're going to take the boat over and we're going to start unloading all of the stuff that we're not going to need for the next couple of months. Um, I've rented a container, 40 foot, con 40 foot container that's Jamie starting up the engine. Um, and we are going to just, just get rid of all the shit. So um, that's the plan for today. I'm actually kind of excited. I haven't driven Parlay since June last year. I went and did below deck. That took a couple of months. Then we went to Florida and, and fixed up the, that um, hurricane damaged cat. So it's been a long time coming. All, all the Ray Marine gears out. It's all been fried by the lightning. Um, so I've only got the controls and steering up here. McFly's excited. Are you excited? Oh, it feels good to be at the helm again, baby. So just because the boat's been sitting for such a long time, I have been getting the guys to start the engines every one or two weeks. So they've been lubricated. The important part of that is to get the uh, raw water, the salt water, circulating out and through the engine because uh, it can become very, very corrosive. So that's been getting done. The engine started up perfect. Um, but before we haul out, I'm just going to go for a spin. Just put both engines full ahead. Just get these things nice and hot. It feels so good to have this boat moving again. Oh my God, I've missed it so much. situation we're probably probably doing nine nine and a half knots right now if you don't run your engines at high loads very often you get glazing inside your cylinders and that's bad that that'll uh, affect your compression and everything like that um, so you don't want glazing so every now and then you just want to run them real hard and uh, just blast all the shit out that uh, accumulates inside those combustion chambers there we go we got pretty much everything off the boat that we wanted to get off the container is about half full, so we had a lot of shit on here. All of that rum, all of the cans, sails, anything that was slightly heavy has now gone. So we're technically ready to haul out. You remember the cabin was completely full before. Now we're left with that. So we've got a nice open cabin there just to start working. Same as the other side. Come across here. Left a couple little things in there, but this is all open now. So we've been delayed a little bit with the uh, haul out. There's a trimaran that sank, uh, hit the reef, and it's it's underwater pretty much. So that's taken priority. They've got to get a crane in here, pull that thing out of the water. I'll, give, I'll take a shot for you guys today. And they need our spot to put the crane to lift the trimaran out. So we've got a few more days up our sleeve, so we're just going to crack on with it. So he's ordered this. 100 ton crane to come down from Panama City. Three and a half grand to get here, haul him out, and then he's gonna have to pay another three and a half to put him back in. So a lot of money involved. So I met with the yard manager, Jim, this morning and just went over the plan with him again. Um, so it was still the original plan. I think we came up with a good plan originally, so we're just gonna stick to it. Um, but he said, at what point do you just walk away from the boat? <laughs> <laughs> So we've just made this diagram of parlay. We're just marking the particular spots that we need to monitor as we straighten the boat. The main ones being these cracks on the main masthead here, uh, the main mast bulkhead here, but also under the salon door right here. This is where the major falling of the bridge deck has happened. So we've got to make sure that those gaps close nicely. We're going to run a string line across the back of the boat and make sure the engine room bulkhead becomes flat. So much to think about, we just gotta do it slowly, just turn by turn on the turnbuckles for the shrouds and just try to get this thing straight. The mast bulkhead is our major area of concern because that's resulted in the whole boat bending outwards. But this is a result of that and we need to strengthen this in order for it to never happen again. So I'm just speaking with um, Vincent and Bruno, the, the naval architects from Lagoon. 
Also got a call from Thomas Gailey, who's the director of Lagoon this morning. Just checking up on how we're doing. I told him we've got a lot on. It's uh, very, very, very technical stuff. But he said uh, we're in great hands with Vincent and Bruno, and I believe that. So um, we're just bouncing ideas back and forth. By the way, guys, this all became possible, this, this contact with um, Lagoon headquarters, because of Lagoon New Zealand. So a guy called Jason, who, who is the director of the, um, the Lagoon dealership there at Oraki Marine in Auckland, um, he put us in touch with Thomas Gailey. And without him, I don't think any of this would have been possible. Um, but luckily, Thomas Gailey, the director of Lagoon, sympathizes with us. He doesn't think anyone has done this sort of work on a Lagoon before. Um, so that's nice. So we're dealing with the top and it's, uh, it's a real privilege to be able to, to say that they're helping us. All right, guys, I've spoken about this in a previous episode, but I'll just remind you again. Under here is the cockpit floor. It's gonna stop here. Check this out. So we're gonna measure this gap. Hopefully that gap all closes as we straighten the boat. There are two pieces of wood that someone before the hurricane has just shoved in between the support for the cockpit floor and the cockpit floor. So I'm back dragging on the fiberglass. Yeah, but are you gonna be able to get back out? I'm thinking this was because the cockpit floor was bouncing. When you have a proper look at the support for the cockpit floor, it was once glued together. This is bullshit. So, in its past life, this boat already had the bridge deck sagging enough for somebody to feel the need to stick a piece of wood in there. Um, but I know this isn't a factory thing. And you can see the 4200 or 5200 or whatever they've used smeared along the, the bottom of the cock, cockpit floor as they've stuck these pieces of wood in. See what I mean though? Like someone's stuck these in there because this cockpit floor was obviously a bit bouncy. Look over here as well. This is how much the... That's a... Whoa, fuck. The whole floor's bouncing when you walk past. Don't worry guys, we'll fix it. This is right behind the salon doors. Look how much of a gap that is. I'm gonna try to get in there now and knock them out because when we start to straighten the boat, we want the support for the cockpit floor to once again be glued to the bottom of the cockpit floor. So when we're about to start straightening, I'm gonna just unload a whole bunch of 5200 in there so that as the bridge deck comes up or the hulls come down, which way, everywhere you look at it, that'll all be glued together again. And that's gonna be a big help with the rigidity of the boat. While I'm here, man, might as well check out that bulkhead back there. It's come this far. Holy shit. Oh, Alright, I'm officially under the cockpit floor. So now I can check out this the front side of this engine room bulkhead, which I've been worried about. Oh uh, I see a crack. Where? Yeah, I see a crack. Yeah, it's a good one. Yeah, is that that might be cracked right through. Yeah, I can see a crack there. Okay, so we might have to cut up inspection hatch here. Over here. Yeah, can you see a crack? Well, there's one on the other side there somewhere. Everything's intact here. Uh-huh, must, must be cracked right through then. See what I mean, guys? This cockpit floor was once attached to this support here, which means this gap is not new. Let's think about that for a minute. Okay, Jamie, jump up and down on it. Fuck me. No wonder they stuck something in there. It's like a trampoline.
covered in shit. This is where I was, guys. Right here. Crawled in from over there. Someone just yelled out Che Guevara to me. I don't get it. This bulkhead is bowed. So there's so much pressure on it from the hull coming up that it's bent. So I want to reinforce this, which means putting another sheet of ply screwed into it and glued into it and then glassing it with epoxy. So I don't want this to bend again like this, which means we have to take at least one of the sides away. I'm thinking this side, instead of cutting open the bathroom, um, but when you see these lagoons and how they're made, they're just not designed to come apart. I don't blame them, but for someone who does want to take them apart, it is a pain in the ass. So all of these pieces are slotted into the wall and then they're all slotted and screwed into each other and the screws are from behind because they're clearly assembled before they slot them into the, into the boat. So they must lay up the hull, put the cabins in and then put the deck on top. So that's all we got going on. <laughs> oh fuck. <laughs> Any ideas? <laughs> <laughs> Leave a comment below if you know how to help us out. <laughs> By the time we read it, we would have we, fucked something up anyway. Yeah, we, we, we would have just left it out. Okay, quick change of plan. We're actually going to try to expose this bulkhead here. This is the main bulk, bulkhead that's cracked there. So, and it's not doing anything. It's just sitting there. It's not holding any weight. So, I think taking this out won't affect the structural integrity of the boat before hauling out. So, and I think it's more important to be able to see the side of this bulkhead and just, just watch what's happening as we're straightening the boat. That's all free. That's all free. Okay, it's out. It's out of the out of the floor here we go we're almost out look at this guys this is how what i was telling you about it's checked into there so we had to cut that out just to get it out all up here as well there we go jigsaw puzzle we're nearly there come on baby yeah there we go that's how you rip the wall out of your cabin ladies and gentlemen this looks like it's delaminated This is just bouncing, look at this guys. This is just cracked there, bent there. That is pretty ugly. I'll just put a line straight across. Man, it's pushed, that one's pushed in as well. Shit. Best, all we can really do is See where those end up. We've also got access to here now, so we can reinforce this whole area. Stop this from happening again. So I bought this back from the States with me. It's a endoscope. So the brand is Nidage. Um, I'm not overly happy with it, to be honest. I wish the resolution was a little bit higher. It was only like 50 bucks. I probably should have bought the next level of camera. Okay guys, we found a little crack in the glue there. All the way down. So that's good down there. But just this part here, cracked. Probably just cut section out here and investigate that a bit more. I love hanging out down near Jamie's toilet. <laughs> My favorite place to be. And rolling. Welcome to another. <laughs> We're going deeper and deeper and deeper into this investigation and um, one thing that we did this morning which I'll show you guys this is this is a beam of 19 layers of fiberglass which goes the entire width of the boat and there's one on each side of the bulkhead and it's meant to obviously 
keep the boat straight. This is a very important structural part of the boat, um, and it's meant to be dead straight. When I run a level across, and I hold it level with the bottom of, bottom of the beam, you can see how much the boat is bent up. That is crazy. It's absolutely insane. So right around here, it started to bend, and just go all the way up like that. Cracked in here. And then when we come down here, when we look at this section, this was obviously meant to be plumb. And you hold, look at that. Look at what's happened to this, these structural supports. For that sandwich structure, you can fit your fingers in there. Hopefully when we back the shrouds off, and the hull comes down, this will come down, and then these will come down as well, and we'll be, we'll be square again. And then we have to think about strengthening all of this so that it does not happen again, because it's so bad. That's it. Also, we've just jumped over to the starboard forward cabin. So there's a gap of about five mil all the way along. So as the hulls have come up, um, the deck has ripped off this beam and uh, there's a gap there. So we'll obviously be cutting all of that out, re-tabbing the beam to the deck to hold the deck down. This goes on and on. We'll see what happens there. Yeah. Holy shit, guys, look at this. We'll just run a uh, string line from the corner of the salon floor over to that side and there is a massive gap under it I don't know if you can see that properly we'll just have to check keep checking this one as we straighten it this salon floor needs to be flat so here's another place that we're gonna check let's go right on the corner there 37 okay. just doing a little to-do list whiteboard marker on a window works really well Probably hard to see in the camera. But yeah, we're gonna dump the anchor chain, we're gonna loosen the shrouds, start leveling the pylons, blah, blah, blah. It's a really nice way to just have your to-do list and things that we have to, to buy, um, just always in your face. And it also makes you feel like Russell Crowe from uh, Beautiful Mind. So check this out. As the boat has bent, we've got compression stresses in this part of the boat. So as the hull came up, it's uh, buckled all of this, both sides. They're good ones. I just borrowed these off the yard manager, Jim. We're gonna just make sure that our turnbuckles are not seized. We're gonna ease the turnbuckles on the shrouds to bring the hulls down. So that's what these are for. Last time we had to try and move these, they were so stiff. So we'll see what they're like today. One, two, three. Okay, we just gotta make sure that doesn't move, okay? Yeah. Yeah, baby! We've also got 100 meters, or roughly 300 feet, of half inch anchor chain gets me every time. Just started the engines because we're gonna go out, spin around, come back in nose to the dock, put the anchor onto the dock and then dump all of that chain off the boat. It's, it's the half inch chain so it's big, it's heavy. So we'll get that off just so that there's less weight. We want to make the boat as light as possible. So I'll just put the anchor over here then you can lay all the chain out and then put the anchor on top of it. Alrighty. what 100 meters of half inch chain look like. I've hardly slept. Why is that? Because I'm fucking nervous. Fuck, the boat's moving so much. She's so weak. This is so lucky that we didn't cross the Pacific like this. 